Robert Draper, who is Jeff Duncan? <laughs> Jeff Duncan is a conservative freshman, a Tea Party freshman from the 3rd Congressional District of South Carolina. And uh, it's a good question, actually, that you're posing because um, I think a lot of people, in, in, even in the House Republican leadership, don't know who Jeff Duncan is. Uh, uh, Duncan um, uh, is really the protagonist of my book in a lot of ways. Uh, and uh, on a couple of levels, I think he's, he's worth considering. First, because as one of the more conservative Tea Party freshmen, he's the straw that stirs the drink in the 112th Congress. But also his experience is that of uh, a guy who's trying to learn how to, to make himself known in the institution, a body of 435, and he's trying to, uh, clamoring about for uh, a way to be more than just 100, uh, one of 435. And so uh, I think that tension between being very powerful as part of a group and trying to exert himself as an individual is present in the book. How did you hook up with Jeff Duncan? By chance, uh, I, the, uh, right after the midterm elections, Peter, I, I decided I wanted to do this book. I, uh, and um, once uh, I convinced my publishers to let me do it, I um, uh, then showed up to the orientation meetings that uh, the freshmen were having here in Washington in the middle of November, and I just grabbed Duncan in the hallway. He was one of uh, two or three people walking in and uh, told him what I was up to. Did you know who he was at the time? I did not. I, I mean, I knew his name. You know, he was one of these 87 Tea Party freshmen, but I knew nothing else about him, and, and he was one of a few people I accosted that day. Uh, and uh, But then we sat and talked in the coming days, and I, I liked what I liked about Duncan is he's a very forthright guy. Guy, very ordinary, and so I thought, you know, this guy could be my everyman as I sort of uh, use, he's sort of the vehicle through which we learn how a bill is passed, how one uh, tries to um, uh, exert oneself on a committee, and, uh, but then the additional dimension of him becoming, uh, being voted by Heritage Action as the most conservative member of the entire body of 435 House of Representatives uh, was an added bonus. Did that surprise you after you got to know Mr. Donovan? Uh, not especially, no. No, he's from a very conservative district, and, uh, and when he ran for um, Congress, uh, he ran on a set of principles. All these guys pretty much ran on something called a Pledge to America, but his was ratcheted up. I mean, his, his was very specific in terms of, uh, uh, you know, the right to bear arms, uh, the belief that uh, God should not be routed out of government, but instead should be an, an uh, integral part of it. And so, um, uh, so no, his conservative bona fides were, were pretty clear to me. What's his view right now about the 112th Congress and their legislative process and progress? I think he was frustrated by it. I mean, it's, uh, uh, he believed that um, the Republicans um, compromised too much and uh, that in the debt ceiling deal, for example, he did not vote for it, uh, did not vote for uh, a number of the continuing resolutions he used to fund the government because he believed that uh, uh, government uh, was still spending too much, needed to be slashed more. In this, he parts company uh, from uh, his own leadership. And, um, uh, and, and what makes Duncan relevant is that um, uh, he's from a conservative district, and that's fine. He should, he should represent them to the best of his abilities. Uh, but uh, beyond that, um, he and um, a couple dozen or so um, very conservative Republicans have succeeded in dragging um, his entire party uh, to the right. Uh, to the point where the bills that they have passed have had to satisfy a lot of these very conservative uh, Republicans and stand very little chance of being ratified by uh, the Senate and passed on for the president's signature. What is his view and the view of the freshman class, the Republican freshman class, of Speaker Boehner? Well, um, I think uh, they're ambivalent. Now, now, Duncan is a little bit more charitable towards Speaker Boehner than, than a lot of the other Tea Party freshmen whom I've uh, spent time with. Uh, Duncan likes Boehner personally, um, but he does not feel uh, any more than any of the other Tea Party freshmen do a particular allegiance. And this is where um, the 112th Congress is very different from, say, uh, uh, the Congress that we saw during the Newt Gingrich Revolution. I mean, when Gingrich came in with his 70-something um, uh, freshmen, these guys were utterly beholden to Newt. I mean, they, uh, uh, Gingrich's contract with America, his go pack tapes that they would listen to to learn how to fundraise and learn how to message, uh, were uh, uh, completely absorbed by them, and they were completely reliant on, on uh, Gingrich. He was their fearless leader. Boehner is not. Boehner um, uh, took note of the Tea Party wave, reckoned that he could either uh, be crushed by it or he could surf it, 
and serve it, he did, um, uh, to the point where he became Speaker of the House for Minority Leader. But uh, uh, the freshmen are well aware that he is not of that movement, and that tension has also been present um, throughout throughout the legislat uh, legislative session. We're going to put the numbers up on the screen. We're talking with Robert Draper. This is his newest book, Do Not Ask What Good We Do, Inside the U.S. House of Representatives, talking about